This question came from a viewer who has multiple Excel tables spread across a range of different worksheets in the same workbook, and he wants to know how to sort all the tables at the same time using just a single button. So to help answer that, I've got a basic Excel workbook set up. There's one blank worksheet called Menu, which is where we'll add our button later on. And then most of the other worksheets contain just a single Excel table, showing a list of the 10 highest grossing films for a particular year. There's also one worksheet which contains multiple tables, just so we can demonstrate how to sort multiple tables on the same sheet. The important thing about this example is that the ranges of data we're working with are formal Excel tables. You can see if I click into a cell in any one of these ranges that the Table Design tab appears in the ribbon here. If I click away from one of those tables, that tab disappears. Now, just in case you're not familiar with creating formal Excel tables, I've left one range here, the 2017 Top 10 Films, as a normal Excel range. If I want to convert this into a table, the simplest thing to do is to select any single cell anywhere within that range, and then either head to the Insert tab in the ribbon and choose Table, or press Ctrl and T on the keyboard. In the dialog box that appears, it should pick out the range of cells for you, but you can reselect this if you need to. And you can also indicate whether your table has headers, and mine definitely does. So at that point, if I click OK, I've now converted that range into a table. I've also saved this as a macro-enabled workbook, and then in the Visual Basic Editor, inserted a module and created the basic outline of a subroutine for sorting our tables. To begin, let's look at how to sort a single table on the Movies All worksheet. I'd like to sort the 2020 films alphabetically by title. To do that, let's start by declaring a variable. I'm going to call mine TBL, and the type, or the class, is going to be a list object. Now I want to capture a reference to that specific table in that variable, so I can say set TBL equals. I need to begin by referencing the worksheet that the table belongs to, so I'm going to use the code name here, sheet2, and then refer to the list objects collection, and in some round brackets, place the index number of the table I want. So I'm going to use the number one, that was the first table I created on that sheet. If you preferred, you can reference tables by names as well. If I head back to the Excel workbook and just click into a cell in the 2020 list, you can see on the Table Design tab, the table name is shown up here. You can change that name if you want to, um, and of course you can just use that name in your code. So if I wanted to reference this by Table 5, I could place the name at Table 5 in double quotes inside those round brackets like so. For this example, I think it's easier just to use the index number, so I'll revert to the number 1 there. Now that we've referred to the table, we can begin working with the sort object which belongs to it. And because we're going to do several things with the sort object, let's use a with statement to help. So I'm going to say with tbl.sort, provide a couple of blank lines and say end with. And then inside that with block, the first thing we'll do is clear any existing sorting which has been applied to the table. So to do that, we can refer to the sort fields property and then use the clear method to remove any existing sort fields. Next, I'd like to add a new sort field, so I'm going to reference the sort fields property again, and this time apply the add method. Then I'm going to type in a space after the word add to see the list of parameters and find there's a single compulsory parameter called key. Now, this is a reference to the range of cells that the sorting will be based on. And for this table, the sorting is going to be based on column B, or the second column of the table, or column B in the worksheet. There are several ways I can specify that. One fairly simple way is just to refer to range B1 on this worksheet. So I could set the key parameter to be equal to sheet2.range B1. Now, of course, the obvious problem with that is that when we expand our example, range B1 is not going to be the key for the second table or the third or the fourth. A slightly easier way, or at least a more flexible way to reference the range of cells that I want to base the sorting on is to refer to the second column of the table object. So to do this, let's get rid of the sheet2.range and instead refer to the table object and then refer to its range property, which returns the range that comprises the entire table. And then I can refer to the columns property of that range and refer to the second item of it. So range columns2. At this point, all I then need to do is apply the sort to the table. So I can say dot apply and then if I run this subroutine, we should find, if we head back to the Excel workbook, that the first table on that worksheet has been sorted alphabetically by the title. You can see that indicated there with a the little symbol in the drop-down list at the top of that column. 
we can use some of the optional parameters to control the way this sorting works. So let's say, for example, we wanted to sort in reverse alphabetic order. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and at the end of the add method, after we've specified the key, we can type in a comma and then specify the order parameter. Next, I'm going to press Control and Spacebar and look for the Excel sort order enumeration, and then type in a full stop after that to see the two options inside it. So there's Excel ascending and Excel descending. Ascending happens to be the default, so I can say Excel descending here, and if I run the subroutine again, we'll see that this time the results are sorted reverse alphabetically. I think ascending worked better for this particular example, so let's just change this back to Excel ascending. The name of the enumeration is optional there, we can just say Excel ascending, we don't need the qualifier there, just to make it a bit easier to read. Another possibly useful option is the sort on parameter. So let's add another comma here and say sort on colon equals, and then press control and spacebar and look for Excel sort on. So that's another enumeration. And if I type in a full stop, we'll see a list of the four possible options. The default option here is sort on values, but we could also go based on the background color of the cell or the font color or the icon if there's one displayed. Values is certainly the most sensible one to go for for this particular example, so let's stick with that. And again, the name of the enumeration is actually optional there, so we can just say Excel sort on values. One other quick option we can apply to the sort object itself rather than the sort fields is we can use the header property to determine whether or not the table has headers. So obviously this table does, and the, uh, the code is guessed correctly that there are header cells in that table, but we can specify that explicitly by using the header property of the sort object. So none of this will actually change the results here. If I run the subroutine again, we should see that same single table sorted alphabetically by the second column. To apply the same sorting to all of the tables on the same worksheet is reasonably straightforward. We just need to loop through all of the list objects on the same sheet. So to do that, let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor. And then rather than setting our table variable to be a reference to an explicit specific list object, let's change this. So it says for each tbl in sheet two dot list objects. So it's just a fairly standard for each loop there. We've used these many times in many, many videos. We'll need to make sure we then move on to the next list object. So we can say next TBL. Because we're referencing our key as the second column of the table object that we're referencing, then we don't need to change any of the other code. We can just run that subroutine again, and we should see now that all of the tables on the same sheet have been sorted by the title column. Now to make the same thing happen on all the worksheets in the workbook, we simply need to add another for each loop to process all of the worksheets. So let's head back to the Visual Basic Editor, and then let's declare a new variable. So I'll say dim ws as worksheet. Then wrapped around this existing for each loop, we can say for each ws in this workbook dot worksheets. We'll then add the next WS line down below next table. So we'll say next WS. And then just to satisfy my preferences for the code layout, I'm gonna indent all those other lines another space. The important thing here then is that we don't loop through the tables on just the sheet two object. We need to replace the reference to sheet two here with a reference to the worksheet that's referred to by this variable at that point in the loop. So. Having done all that, we can just run the subroutine again, and when we switch back to Excel, we'll see all the tables on all of the sheets have been sorted alphabetically by the second column of that table. It's probably worthwhile mentioning that when we loop through all the worksheets, it does indeed include this extra worksheet called Menu, which obviously doesn't have any table objects or list objects on it. So that is still included within the loop, but because it doesn't have any list objects, this loop basically doesn't do anything. Just to wrap up the video, I think it would be nice if we could provide the end user with a choice of which column to sort by. So to help with this, let's head back into the Excel workbook and then into the menu sheet. I'm gonna type in a quick title into one cell, choose sort column. And then next to that, I'm going to use data validation to create a drop-down list populated with the column headers from one of the tables on one of these worksheets. 
So in cell B2, I'm going to go to the data tab in the ribbon and find and click on the data validation tool. And then I'm going to allow a list in that cell. So allow not any value, but allow a list. And then for the source of the list, I can go to one of these existing tables and then simply select the column header range. Now, the important thing here is if I select one of the ranges of column headers from one of the single worksheets. The Movies All worksheet has a different column name for each different table for the first column. So I want the most generic one possible. So I'm going to go to Movies 2017 and select the Rank, Title, Distributor and Worldwide Gross column names. So having done that, I can click OK. And then if I click on my drop down list that I've just created in cell B2, I'll be able to select one of those four column headings. Next, I need to convert the name of the column the user has chosen into the number which represents the position of that column in the range of column headers. So the word title, for example, it becomes the second column, so I need to return the number two. If I chose distributor, that would be number three, etc. There are several choices we have for doing this, but I'm going to use the function built into Excel called match. And we're going to use the result of the match function to replace the column number we're using here. So let's do this separately. Let's declare a variable to hold the result of this. Let's call this something like sort col number. And the result of the match function when we call it in VBA is going to be a double. We can then say sort col number equals and then refer to the worksheet function property and use the match method. So there are three parameters, or the third one is optional. The first parameter is the range containing the value I'm trying to look up. So I want to refer to the value on sheet one in cell B2. So I'm going to say sheet one dot range B2 dot value. If I was doing this for real, I would probably give these worksheets more sensible code names, I think. Then argument two is the range of cells containing all the possible values I'm looking up. So I'll type in a comma there, and then I want to refer to the, uh, the Movies 2017 worksheet and range A1 to D1. So again, I can use the code name for that worksheet there. Let's call this one sheet three dot range. And then I'm gonna to refer to A1 colon D1. Then the third parameter indicates what type of match I'm looking for. If I want an exact match, I can specify the number zero, which is what I want. So I can close the round brackets there. And then what I'd like to do is simply replace the number two here with a reference to my sort col num. So let's refer to that sort col number variable. Okay, so let's just give this one a quick test. If I run this one here, then everything still works. And if I look back at my worksheets, everything is sorted alphabetically by film title still. If I switch back to the menu sheet and change this to let's go with worldwide gross, for example, and then let's add the button while we're here to run this subroutine. So from the developer tab in the, in the ribbon, we can head to the insert tool. Then we can draw a button just below that and then attach the only subroutine we have, sorting tables. And then I would just change the text on the button, sort all tables, something like that. We should be able to click on that button and find that all the tables now are sorted in ascending order of worldwide gross instead. We could do something similar to allow the user to choose whether to sort in ascending or descending order. So let's add another drop down list, let's say choose sort order. And then next door to that cell, we'll use data validation again to allow the user to pick between two different values. So I'm going to allow a list. This time I'm just going to type in the values for my list. I don't have cells that contain the values. So I'll just type in ASC, comma, DESC. You can use any descriptive words there that you like. I'm using shorthand versions of ascending and descending, of course. So now that I've done that, I can choose either ascending or descending from the list. And then to convert that into the appropriate value, we could just use a simple if statement in our VB code. In fact, we could use an if function. So let's declare a new variable. Let's say dim sort order as, and then we'll say XL sort order. So we'll use one of the existing enumerations. So it can only either be XL ascending or XL descending. To calculate which value it is, we'll say sort order equals 
and then we'll use an if function. So we say IIF, open some round brackets, and then once again, we can refer to the particular value on the worksheet. So let's say sheet one dot range B3 dot value. Check if that's equal to ASC. So that's literal text. That will be case sensitive as well, by the way. So be careful with that. Followed by a comma. And if that happens to be true, we'll use the XL ascending constant. Otherwise, we'll use the XL descending constant. There we go. Then we simply need to replace our explicit mention of that XL ascending there with a reference to our sort order variable. Of course, this is dependent on a user having selected values for both of these cells. So cell B2 and B3 must have selected a valid option. So you'll need to add in some, uh, some uh, validation yourself to make sure that the user has selected something appropriate. Simple if statements would, would help with that. So let's go with worldwide gross in descending order this time. And we'll choose sort all tables and we'll hopefully see that now everything's sorted in descending order of worldwide gross. So we've basically got the original sort order back, the top 10 highest grossing movies for each year. Let's finish by adding in that basic bit of validation to make sure that a user can't simply clear the contents of the cells and then try running the code. That will cause a runtime error, of course, because we can't find a match for the blank cells that we're, we've got in the worksheet currently. So to make sure that we exit from the subroutine if we haven't filled in a value for either of those two cells, we could add a basic if statement to say, if sheet1.rangeb2.value is an empty string, or sheet1.rangeb3.value is an empty string, then we'll show a message, perhaps use a basic message box, uh, you need to select a sort column and order. Maybe use VB critical to make it look like an official important message. No extra comma at the end there, apologies. And then we can simply say exit sub. So if we just head back to the Excel worksheet now and we try to run that subroutine again, I've got to select a sort column and order. So I can select a sort column but unless I choose an order as well, it won't work. But as long as I have both things selected, everything now works again. I'm just getting a little annoyed by the positioning of my button, so I'm just gonna change its position there to make it look a little neater. Okay, so there we go. I think that's probably enough to answer the original question, probably a little bit more than was requested, but some interesting ideas there, and you can take that an awful lot further, of course. So thanks very much for watching. See you next time.